Welcome back everybody. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. Today we got something kind of outlandish. We're going to be doing another meltdown video for you today. This little rig here is kind of silly. It looks like something that almost belongs in a Kurt Russell movie. I couldn't get Snake Bliskin to come out and shoot this for you today, so you just have to settle for lonely old me, I guess. Uh, but we got a CMMG 22 upper here with a four inch barrel. We got a KG made swarm. This is an all titanium can. Uh, so we're going to be shooting full auto until this gun fails. We've gotten some speculation from folks about you know, how long this thing's gonna last. So leave your comments below. Let the world know how long you think this little guy's gonna last. We got a whole bunch of Black Dog magazines here loaded up with some Federal Auto Match. We're gonna be shooting through it. Got it topped off with a little ACOG, which of course, in typical meltdown fashion, we're not gonna use. Uh, the one thing I am gonna mention about this that we have changed is the standard CMMG firing pin. Uh, we've ran this gun full auto a good bit and it'll break after around 1300 rounds. We had Ray machine us a special firing pin for this gun. So that is, I just want that caveat out there that we did change it up just a little bit to give us a little bit more longevity in this rig here. As far as I know, this is gonna be a world record for the amount of full auto 22 that's been fired in one sitting. I can't find any references to anybody running this much 22 ammo. If we end up running the amount of rounds that I think this gun's gonna run, we're setting a world record today. Also, there's never been this much 22 ammo at one time put through a suppressor. So we're kind of torture testing the suppressor. We're seeing how long a 22 can run. So no telling what's going to happen. We're just going to go for it. We have no idea how this is going to go. We're just going to do it. All right. Here we go. We got some drums, we got 25 shot mags, 50 round drums, and we got a couple of 32s. Gonna go for it. I'm gonna have some guys back here loading some mags for me. <laughs> it's like a woodpecker. All right, we're running five sticks and a drum. So here's a drum. All right, looks like it uh, didn't pick up like the last three or four rounds. Let's try that. There we go. Oh yeah, she's skanky. Gonna keep going. And hey guys, if any of these mags are short when I'm sending them to you, let me know. I'm not really looking at them, I'm just uh, shooting. Oh, she uh, slipped up a bit. <laughs> it's like a laboratory of destruction. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> it's like a pack of angry hornets. Poisonous angry hornets, Chad. Look at this thing just running. <laughs> Dude, she won't die.
Thank you, Chad. You're welcome. Uh oh. Hello. All right, we're getting some malfunctions here. Okay, I want to make I want to make note of something, guys. This is one of the Black Dog mags that is marked Keltec. I don't know if this is an older magazine, perhaps, but I just want to make a note of that. It is a different magazine. Put it to the side. Yep, put it to the side. And have that Geisley Go Juice on, on tap. Dude, that can is hot. We're going to take a temperature reading in just a moment. Uh-oh. That chamber is getting a little crusty. Uh, this is another one of the Keltec marked magazines. For the purposes of this test, Chad, pull all the Keltec mags, please. All right. Oh, wait, we're not in drum territory yet. We're about to be, though. I believe the newer mags have metal feed lips, Chad. Is that correct? They do. Okay, good deal. Oh, yeah. Boy, she is getting hot. All right, we're going to take a very quick temperature reading, guys. The suppressor is 222 degrees. The barrel, 301 degrees. The chamber, 149 degrees. The upper receiver, 161 degrees. The barrel nut, 275 degrees. We're gonna continue the test. Not bad. No, not running bad. I am gonna give her just a little bit of lube. She's looking a little silly here. All right, we're gonna continue the test. I guarantee old Snake Bliskin in Escape from New York would like to have this. Oh, yeah. You know, when you got a horde of ninjas coming after you. Are we sure this is not rigged, Chad? This thing's running awfully good. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> okay, now. We're on the 32 round magazines. These are also Black Dog magazines. <laughs> uh, it is, man. You might want to load some drums. Had a couple of malfunctions so far, but guys, you know, it's a, it's a 22. I mean, all in all, I mean, it's running pretty good. Uh-oh. I spoke too soon. <laughs> it is crazy. It's stringing those shots like three feet to the right now. Uh-oh. Well, that sounded weird. Uh -oh. <laughs> it's doing that weird thing again. <laughs> huh. 
And guys, we do have a chamber brush on standby just in case we want to swab the chamber on this thing. I mean, all in all, it's not running terrible. All right, there's your drum. Yeah, starting to give some weird, weird issues here, for sure. How many rounds, you know, have any idea how many rounds we're in, Chad? Nope. All right, the chamber's kind of got some fallout in it. I think what we're probably going to have to do if we want to keep running this thing, yeah, it's not feeding. Yeah, failure to feed. Tell you what, just we're going to try another mag just to make sure it's not the mag. All right, this is another Black Dog mag. This is a kel magazine. Let's try it. Here we go. We've definitely seen a decrease in reliability this, at this part, this far in. Which, uh, I'm gonna keep running until we just have some kind of weird failure. Yeah, she's definitely getting sluggish, Chad. Yep. But, I mean, to be fair. Yeah, at this point, we just have rounds that are failing to go into battery. I think it's safe to say that's performance expectation we can just about look at. Yeah. I don't know, man. I, w I would venture to say at this point that reliability has suffered to the point where at this point it probably needed cleaning, but we haven't popped an extractor. We haven't broke a firing pin. And we've had a few minor issues, but nothing that wouldn't be indicative of a rimfire gun. This thing sure is skanky. We're going to go ahead and try this drum. All right, I'll tell you what we're going to do. They're going to keep topping off magazines. Yeah, that bolt is actually sticking a little bit. The bolt is 70 degrees. The chamber is... ...70 degrees. The barrel is 225 degrees. The barrel nut is... 230, the can is 237 degrees. We're gonna work as quickly as we can. We're gonna scrub the chamber. We might have some fallout in the chamber, some carbon buildup. We're gonna quickly scrub the barrel, keep going. Okay, roughly two minutes have elapsed. We went ahead and uh, pulled the gun apart and scrubbed the chamber. Really nothing abnormal other than being really, really nasty. We're gonna continue the test. The gun hasn't really, like, technically died yet, so we're going to keep going. Hopefully the chamber cleared it up. Oh, I can definitely tell that things run a lot smoother. I think that chamber just began to get a little nasty. Uh-oh. Ammo's running pretty good. Who says shooting can't be an Olympic sport? Well, it is a technically, I guess. All right. My favorite part. drums man
All right, I don't know who's setting these mags here, but we're doing five at a time. So try not to get me confused here. Yes, the balls. <laughs> We don't really have much barrel left, do we? It's like a pinball machine. I don't think we're going to be able to generate enough heat to kill this thing, Chad. I think it's just we're waiting on something to break at this point. Yeah, it's doing that sluggish thing again, Chad. Hmm. I think that that, you know, maybe our uh, recoil spring and everything is just getting weak because it does, it feels very sluggish. I don't know at what point we could definitively call it until something breaks. Go juice on there. Oh, come on. Well, at least this is one of our cheaper meltdowns. That sounded strange. It's certainly the quietest. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you what, how about some in the dirt? It's like a woodpecker. Here, here's a woodpecker that's gonna run an endurance race. Oh, well. <laughs> I ate my words there. Pretty quiet. There's going to be a lot of re either really happy people or really mad people or really pissed off Ruger 1022 fans. Oh yeah, it's doing the same thing. I think that chamber is just getting a lot of fallout in it. Yeah, it's doing the same thing. Basically, it's doing what it what it took a lot of rounds to do before, except it just didn't take as long this time. I mean, you got to think though. At this point, I mean, we we have fought off multiple motorcycle gangs of bears. I mean, if we still got a motorcycle gang of bears on top of us, we're doing something wrong at this point. Didn't run all of that drum. Keep going. Uh-oh. Definitely starting to get those rimfire uh, 
kind of finicky issues that you get out of rim fires. It definitely took a while for it to happen though. Yeah, it's doing the same thing. Failure to feed. Failure to feed. Failure to feed. Yeah, it's that chamber is really skanky, Chad. I think at this point. What this video has really become is just a matter of really how long a 22, yeah, she's done. How long a 22 can go without being cleaned. I think that's what this really comes down to. I'm going to try one more drum just for the heck of it, see if it'll run it. Oh, give me another drum. Oh, that's a partial drum. All right, well, there's all of that drum. I'm gonna try some 32s. I don't think we can get this thing hot enough to kill it. Pretty, pretty much at this point in the video, I'm gonna call it. All right, guys, that was a pretty interesting result that we got out of the little CMMG 22 there. Uh, you know, it's crazy. It ran a ridiculous amount of rounds. We allowed the gun to cool down. We pulled it apart. Uh, we got the KG made suppressor apart. I mean, there's a little bit of lead buildup here and there, and there's definitely some, you know, leading on the baffles itself. But overall, I mean, the suppressor came apart relatively simple. I mean, we had to kind of beat it with a rod a little bit to get it apart, but that's to be expected. So you're probably wondering how many rounds the uh, gun ended up going. Uh, well, it's kind of an estimate because we just had to, you know, review the footage. It went 2,178 rounds, and that's kind of an estimate. Uh, we factored in some of the stoppages as well, counting, you know, removing those from the count. So almost 2,200 rounds, that's almost seven bricks of Federal Auto Match. So, I mean, just to put it in perspective, all these empty boxes, I mean, we just put an amount of ammo through this gun that your average person probably wouldn't do in an entire year. Uh, now, granted, some of us shoot a lot, but the gun's pretty filthy. I mean, you look at the lower, it is just caked in a nice layer of carbon. The upper is definitely skanky. It's got a whole bunch of nasty stuff in the upper, uh, the barrel, it, you know, we can't really see anything that's terribly wrong with the barrel itself. I mean, I think what it really comes down to is just a maintenance thing. Um, the gun just needs a really good cleaning, and I think it'll probably run just fine. I really think that if the gun hadn't have gotten, like, really gummed up with all of the, the nasty from all the ammo, I think it would have just kept going and kept going. Uh, I don't think that the 22 long rifle cartridge generates enough heat to really cause a heat issue. In fact, when KG made when they like kind of heat treat these, not really heat treat, but when they, they'll, they'll do like kind of a heat bluing in a way and they'll, they'll get like a nice blue or kind of purple color out of these things. And when they do that, they actually heat these suppressors up even hotter than what we were able to get this with, with full auto 22, just back, at, uh, back to back there. So, I mean, we got a little bit of a, you know, exchange of heat that caused the uh, temperature to change a little bit and caused that little bit of discoloration, but not any more than they would do at the factory. So that's pretty interesting. Uh, the suppressor held up, the gun held up, the optic held up, uh, the gun held up. So oddly enough, I, th I think what this video really proves is that it's really just a maintenance thing. Once your 22s get so gummed up full of carbon and lead buildup, uh, yeah, your suppressors are going to get a little bit heavier because they're going to get leading. In fact, the only definitive strip of lead I was able to pull out of the entire suppressor is just this little sliver of lead buildup right here. So not a terribly large amount of lead buildup. Um, so that's really cool to know that your can can pretty much go, go the distance. So it proved that suppressors are, are definitely overbuilt 
and good quality and they can last a long time. And it proved that a 22 conversion can uh, take a licking and keep on ticking. I mean, this is way more ammo than any average person would ever put through uh, a gun in one sitting. And I would venture to say that this is actually a world record. I don't think this much 22 ammo has been put through any gun in, the, in as quick of amount of time as what we just did ever. So there's, there's our, uh, our record to beat, 2,178 rounds. And that's the most ammo that's been put through, so 22 suppressor in the shortest amount of time as well. So I think that's the most rounds put through suppressor and the most rounds put through a 22 of any type. We're going to call it that because I can't find anybody that's ever done this amount of rounds like this. So hopefully you guys learned something in this video. But I'll tell you what, just to make sure that I'm right, okay, we're going to clean this gun really good right now. I've got five drums loaded up right here. So the way we're going to test it, we're going to clean the gun, put the suppressor back together, and if it runs all five drums without a malfunction, then we can pretty much surmise that the gun itself is good to go and that it just got too dirty and that we couldn't get it hot enough to kill it and we couldn't put enough rounds through it to kill it without it getting too dirty to stop running. So maybe the fact that it got too dirty was kind of the fail safe that caused the gun to not kill itself. One other thing that we are gonna check that we did not check yet, we're gonna check the recoil spring to see if it's gotten short or long or if it's uh, you know caused any weird changes in geometry due to being wore out. Because right now, this upper's got about 7,000 rounds on it total. Um, Chad's been running the mess out of this thing. So we're gonna see if the springs wore out. We are going to replace the recoil spring with a fresh recoil spring. We're gonna continue on the existing fire pin and we're gonna run it. Let's do it. All right, so as a test, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna run five drums. And if it runs all five drums without stopping, then we can pretty much surmise it was a maintenance issue. And as long as the gun's kept clean, it'll in theory go about as long as you want it to. So we're just gonna go for it here. <laughs> All right, we got a stoppage. Stove pipe. We're going to keep going. Might have, uh, might have choked up the firing pin. Stove pipe. Well, we've already debunked the test, but let's see if it'll run the rest of these. Well, that ran. Might have just been a fluke. Maybe we had an issue with our drum. All right. <laughs> ran that. Kept on drumming along there. All in all, not bad. Uh, definitely increased reliability after cleaning it. 22s tend to be a little bit finicky with this kind of stuff. And what's interesting is we put a lot of heat through this gun just in those five drums there. I'd be, grab that temperature gauge for me, if you don't mind. Let's see how hot we got that suppressor just in that amount of time. The suppressor is 304 degrees. So even uh, throughout running those 25 shot mags, intermittently throughout the video, those five drums got it hotter than we got it in the entire video. So that's a pretty interesting result. 309 degrees, 334 degrees towards the end of the barrel. So pretty crazy. Well guys, we uh, really appreciate you watching today's video. We had a ton of fun making it. Thank you very much for the support. We've always got tons of things going on. Uh, more meltdowns on the way. We'll come up with some other crazy things. We do have some other meltdowns planned. If you haven't subscribed yet, consider subscribing. Stay tuned, more on the way.